गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे इट इज द लास्ट लेक्चर ऑफ द चैप्टर सरफेस केमिस्ट्री एंड दिस टॉपिक इज इमालसन एप्लीकेशन ऑफ इमालसन एंड एप्लीकेशन ऑफ कोलाइड्स एंड कोलाइड अराउंड अस ऑल दो इन सीबीएसई बोर्ड सम ऑफ द पोर्शन ऑफ इमालसन हैज बीन डिटेक्टेड बट दिस चैप्टर इज दिस टॉपिक इज वेरी सिंपल so i want to discuss each and every topic of this uh, topic emulsion now see what is emulsion in fact in uh, your house you can do one activity take some water and add some mustard oil to this water and shake well you get a solution and that solution is nothing but emulsion and if we leave the mixture of oil and water for some time you get the separate layer are there so emulsion is nothing but the mixture of immiscible liquids especially oil and water so in today's lecture we'll complete discuss about the emulsion type of emulsion emulsifying agent and detection of emulsion so come to the today's lecture now now see emulsion emulsions are colloidal solutions in which both the dispersed phase and dispersion medium are liquids and these liquids are immiscible these are mixture of two immiscible or partially miscible liquids obtained by shaking well just now i had told if you take some uh, mustard oil and water there is layer formation mustard oil is immiscible in water and if you shake well the mixture of mustard oil and water you get a solution and which solution is known as emulsion so emulsions are nothing but the colloidal solution of liquid liquid mixture provided both liquid must be either immiscible or partially miscible so emulsions are of two types the first one is oil dispersed in water this is o w type emulsion here the dispersed phase i have written here deeply the dispersed phase is oil and dispersion medium is water the well known example is milk in milk the major part is water and the minor part is oil the milk or vanishing cream these are the popular example of o w type emulsion now the second one is it is reversed of the o w type second one is w o type means water dispersed in oil here dp dispersion phase dispersed phase is water and dispersion medium is oil the best example is butter or cream now there are two variety of emulsions now come to the third part come to this third topic this is emulsifiers or emulsifying agent on the basis of the name just i have told when you shake oil and water it forms emulsion but to leave that for some time again it is it become in two separate layers so for joining the two layers or for stabilizing the emulsion a third chemical is added to that emulsion which stabilizes the emulsion is known as emulsifying agent or emulsifier so look the literature these are substances which helps in stabilizing an emulsion of oil and water and thus prevent them from getting separated getting separated is known as emulsifiers or emulsifying agent now look for o w type emulsion 
The emulsifying agents are proteins, gums, natural and synthetic soaps. These are the emulsifying agent for OW type emulsion. Very beautiful question. If I ask why milk is stable emulsion, what will be your answer? Now see, milk is the emulsion of mix is milk is the mixture of oil and water. And milk is OW type emulsion. And milk has huge amount of protein and that protein act as emulsifying agent for the milk and it is the reason that milk is very stable emulsion. Now for WO type emulsion the emulsifying agents are heavy metal salt of fatty acid, long chain alcohols, lamp blacks etc. So you must remember about emulsifying agent or emulsifier that for OW type emulsion, protein, gum, natural and synthetic soaps are emulsifying agent. For WO type emulsion, heavy metal salt of fatty acid, long chain alcohols or lamp plaques are acting as emulsifying agent. Now, how you detect detection of emulsion? How you detect that this uh, emulsion is either of OW type or WO type? There are two tests to attempt to decide whether the given emulsion is OW type or WO type. Now first one is dye test. Suppose oil soluble dye is added to the emulsion. Oil soluble dye is added to the emulsion. If colored droplets are seen in colorless background, then it is O W type emulsion and if colorless droplets are seen in colored background then it is W O type emulsion. This is one way to decide whether the emulsion is O W type or W O type. Now the second test is dilution test. The best example is given by our Gualaji milkman. When milkman add water to milk, we are not finding the layer. Thus, it means if the emulsion is diluted with water and no layers are formed, then it is OW type emulsion. Example is milk is diluted with water. We are getting no. We are getting no any layer. If layer is formed by adding water, that is, if not diluted with water, then it is WO type emulsion. Now, by this way, we can decide, we can detect the type of emulsion. Now, the last topic of this emulsion is demulsification. Now, on the basis of name, you can decide. Demulsification means just opposite of emulsification. It means the process of decomposing or separating an emulsion back into its constituent liquids that is oil and water is known as demulsification. Demulsification can be done by centrifugation, filtration, boiling, freezing and by some chemical method. Well known example you know in your house as you have seen if you centrifuge milk then what you get the butter comes out from the milk. If you put milk in freeze you see on the pot inside the pot we get some milks are some uh, butter are floating over milk. So these are the way for demulsifying, for separating oil from water. Now, this topic is very important and this topic is including in your course. So be serious here. Colloids around us, surrounding us, where are colloids are, where colloids are available. 
Now the first topic is you can see the NCRT and you should read the NCRT carefully for detailed study. Point one is blue color of the sky. Already we know the sky is has blue color. So dust particle along with water suspended in air scattered blue light scattered blue light which reaches our reaches our eye and the sky looks blue. The reason is there is scattering of blue light only. Now the second point is fog, mist and rain. You should read from NCRT. This is a very simple one. Now the third point is food articles. Food articles, milk, butter, halwa, ice cream, fruit juice, etc. These are colloids which are in food articles. Now come to the blood. This blood topic is uh, very important. Generally it comes in examination. It is a colloidal solution of an albuminoid substance. By adding alum or FeCl3 solution, blood is coagulated and it stops further bleeding. The question is asked from by the teacher that why we use alum after save or why we use FeCl3 solution after save or why we use FeCl3 solution if there is cut. The answer is very simple because FeCl3 or alum has charged has ions which coagulate the blood, clot the blood and the bleeding stops. This is the main reason behind that. In uh, villages, you generally listen from your um, dadaji, dadaji like that. If cut is there in, in your hand or in your leg, then take some common salt, add water and bind it or rub NACL on the cut part. What you get? The blood clots. In normal example, you can see when you are in journey and there is cut. What you do? You just pour urine on that. Apne urine ko cut par dalo. The blood clots and bleeding stops. The concept is your urine is having dissolved ions and due to presence of that ions, the bleeding stops and there is coagulation of the blood. So this is a very important topic. Be focused here. Now fifth topic is soils. Fertile soils are of colloidal nature. So it absorbs moisture and nursing materials. The concept is fertile soils are of colloidal nature. Now the sixth topic is very very important and the topic is formation of delta. This question uh, was asked by CBSE board once. So the question is what? When river water meet to sea water there is formation of delta. Why? That type of question is asked. So river, what is the answer of that? River water is a colloidal solution of clay. In rainy season you see river water is not very clean. It looks muddy. So river water is a colloidal solution of clay. Sea water contains a number of electrolytes and many ions are available in sea water. When river water when river water meets the sea water, the electrolytes present in the sea water coagulate the colloidal solution of clay and hence delta is formed. The answer is very clear that river water is muddy water and river water is colloid of clay. Seawater has dissolved ion, NaCl, MgCl2 like that. 
so due to presence of dissolved iron in sea water coagulation of clay of river water take place and due to coagulation of the clay sedimentation of the clay there is formation of delta when river water meet with sea water so that here this fourth and sixth these two topics are very very important and you should focus maximum on these two topic now the last topic of this colloidal collide is application of collides now the point 1 electrical precipitation of smoke you see electrical precipitation of a smoke there is a cotrell smoke precipitator look the ncert see see here this is cotrell smoke precipitator so generally in the chimney of industry this cotrell smoke precipitator is set up what is this actually this has high voltage electrodes nearly 30000 volt or more electrode is here the smoke from the industry is coming in this side and the gases are exhausting from this now the smoke the polluted air exhausted by industry is collides of dust particle and air due to high charge on this electrode the particle become neutral and it sediment in the form of ash so precipitated ash is here and now pollution free water comes in the environment so now we day this use of uh, electrical precipitation of a smoke is highly required for every industry so this is again very important topic what is cotrell smoke precipitator the concept is the dust particle get sedimented due to presence of high electrical high electric charge on the electrode so you should focus more here now the next topic is purification of drinking water now you see generally you can do the activity in your houses also if you add some alum in water normally normal water is uh, not very pure it is just like colloid and some clay are there in water if you pour some alum in water you get the impurities present in water become neutralized and it is coagulated or sedimented so by adding alum alum you know potassium alum the formula is k2so4 l2so4 whole thrice 24 h2o this is alum this is alum so when you add some alum in impure water the impurities are sedimented and from upper part of water you can uh, decant that and you get pure water now third point is medicine again i am telling you should go through in detail in ncert but it is given in brief most of the medicines are colloidal in nature two examples are given in your ncert two or three examples are given in ncert please look argyrol is a silver sole used as an eye lotion remember it colloidal of antimony is used in curing kala jar colloidal gold is used for intramuscular injection milk of magnesia is very popular it acts as antacid it is an emulsion is used for stomach disorders now the noted point is here 
colloidal medicines are more effective suppose one is asking ki colloidal medicines are more effective why it is more effective your answer is colloidal medicines are more effective because they have large surface area and are therefore easily assimilated due to large surface area it has a very nice action so most of the medicines which are in colloidal form they are more uh, effective than in powder form or in tablet form so now the fourth point is tanning tanning is again very important what is tanning look the note animal hides are colloidal in nature when a hide which has positively charged particle animal hide has positive positively charged particles it is soaked in tannin which contains negatively charged colloidal particles then mutual coagulation take place resulting in the hardening of leather this process is known as tanning so this is very important already i have explained in previous lecture that what is mutual coagulation mutual coagulation means when you are adding positively charged colloid to negatively charged colloid the coagulation take place this concept is known as mutual coagulation so <coughs> tanning means hardening of animal hide now this is very important again now the fifth one is cleansing action of soap and detergent already we have read in previous lecture the cleansing action of soaps and detergents already you know soaps and detergent have two uh, portion one is hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail the hydrophobic tail attached to the dirt particle and the hydrophilic head are attracted by water and by this way the cloth become clean now the next topic is photographic plates and films you see the ncert and read third one is rubber industry you know you know this please look rubber industry now look this latex is a colloidal solution of rubber particles which are negatively charged rubber is obtained by coagulating coagulation of latex naturally if latex is colloidal solution of rubber particle which are negatively charged you can add any positively charged uh, ion it become coagulated and there is a formation of rubber now the eighth point is industrial products in the, in industrial products paints inks synthetic plastic rubber graphite lubricants cement etc all are colloidal solution now in homework i have given look this look this uh, please note the homework in text 5.7 5.8 and exercises 5.1 to 5.27 all are requested to make one separate copy it is in beginning i have told and write the answers of all these questions in your separate copy now let this question there is a very beautiful question here in text 5.7 what modifications can you suggest what modifications can you suggest in the hardy sul law in hardy sul law what is hardy sul law more is the charge on the ion more is its coagulating power but the modification can be done you can see your side book and can check your answer the theme of the answer is the modification of this hardy sul law can be done on the basis of the size of the ions smaller is the size of ions more is its polarizing effect so if more is polarizing power of the ions more is its coagulating coagulating power 
So this type of modification can be done. Now we should go through all the questions. Again, there is a instruction with request to all the students that this surface chemistry is the branch of surface, surface chemistry, part of surface chemistry, as uh, sorry, part of physical chemistry. And this chapter is very easy, very simple. So be serious about this chapter and learn all the topic which I have taught. Now today it is enough. From next, next lecture, you should see some videos and assignments of, of uh, some next chapter. Thank you.